Can you make natto from any wild plant? That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya, the Natto King. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and Live Wiser, Not Smarter. Now, I have received several questions regarding wild plants you can use to make natto. You know, for example, can you use this plant to make natto and so on? Now, I have made some videos before about what wild plants you can use to make natto, but it seems to be many people still confused about it. So one more time, I will clarify this point for us, including some up-to-date information as well. So please watch the video until the end. This is natto Q&A video. So the first question is, Hello, Mr. Takamiya. First of all, thank you for introducing natto into our family life. I have a question for you. Is it possible to use grape stalk, grapevine branches, or nettle stems, both from our garden, for the fermentation of soybeans? Um, now, this is because I made a video called How to Make Natto from a Wild Plant. And in the video, I used mint to make natto. Some people may be wondering, you can only use mint to make natto. So I will answer that question. And then before that, um, so the second question is, I have some dried rose hips that grew locally. Would they be acceptable regarding the local issue? I know it might be a bit odd to taste, but in theory, is it okay? I can't eat wheat, corn, etc due to arthritis and food sensitives. Uh, thank you for your videos and information education. Okay, so about local thing, because I did also say it is better to choose wild plant that grew locally. So what, I, what do I mean by locally? Now, the next question is awesome. Would I be able to use mint from the farmer's market? So I think this is a similar question, whether the farmer's market counts as local and is it safe to use mint from the farmer's market, I suppose. Okay, so I will answer all those questions. Can you use grape stalks as a natto starter? What do I mean by local for wild plants for natto making? Why do they have to be local? And does farmer's market count as local? So please stay tuned until the end. But before that, have you subscribed to this channel yet? If you haven't, please subscribe because you will not miss my videos. Because I have talked about this before, but there's tons of videos on my channel and then I will talk about it again and again. So why do you want to make natto at home in the first place? Um, three reasons you want to make natto at home. Uh, natto is not always available in certain countries or certain regions. Uh, it is very difficult to get hold of natto. And even if you can, they are quite expensive. And you can't get organic natto easily, organic or Natto using GM-free soybeans, sometimes it is difficult to get hold of them. And the best way is to make your own natto. Plus, natto is easy to make. Compared to other fermented foods, such as miso or soy sauce, natto is much easier. Because it takes about 10 months to make miso, while it takes only 48 hours to make natto. It's much shorter, much easier. The procedures to make natto is very simple. Um, one, soaking the beans and then steaming the beans, disinfecting in boiling water, which means if you're using wild plant, you disinfect wild plant in a boiling water. Inoculating Bacillus subtilis to the beans. Bacillus subtilis is natto bacteria that you need. Five, fermenting the beans. Six, cooling the natto in the Bridge. The step four, inoculating Bacillus subtilis to the beans is the critical step. And then there are several ways to inoculate natto king. Natto king is the Bacillus subtilis to the soybeans. One, using store-bought natto bean. This is the most simple, easiest way. 
uh, or using manufactured nut or starter spores. And finally, using a wild plant. So what are the differences among those uh, different methods? Store-bought nut or beans advantages are easy and simple, Bacillus subtilis is optimized. So usually store-bought natto, they are manufactured in natto companies, and then they use a specific Bacillus subtilis. They kind of uh, test it in the laboratory and kind of optimize the Bacillus subtilis into a you know, better quality. Well, that's what they say anyway. And therefore, Bacillus subtilis is probably better quality. And disadvantages, Bacillus subtilis is unified and not local. So maybe it is optimized and better quality, but it is kind of lab made and unified. It is not unique and definitely not local because it is uh, developed somewhere in the laboratory that you don't know. It's not from your region. And you don't know much about the bacteria used. I mean, how they develop this bacteria. What did they do? Did they add anything? We, we don't know. Manufactured natto starter spores, advantages, bacillus subsidies is optimized in the same way as store-bought natto beans. And this time, you know about the bacteria used more because usually it says in the package. Well, you cannot find that information in the regular natto package, but for the package of natto starters, you have more information about the bacteria. And disadvantages, again, bacillus is unified and not local. A wild plant. Advantages, bacillus subtilis is natural and local. It is may, It may not be optimal, but it is natural. And as far as I'm concerned, natural is optimal. I don't want to change that natural state personally. Disadvantages, Bacillus subtilis is not optimized. So some people, you know, may prefer uh, optimized kind of lab-made bacteria, then yeah, uh, may not be sanitary safe. I personally don't think using wild plant is dangerous at all. There has not been any cases that some people had a problem um, because, you know, traditionally, People have been using wild plant for centuries, and that has been the way. But some scientists who, you know, who are into kind of lab testing and things, and they, they, they feel safer if it's developed in the laboratory. So if you're one of those people, then go ahead, choose manufactured natto spores or store-bought nattos. But if you are more like a natural person, then maybe a wild plant is a better choice for you. Why local? Why the bacteria has to be local? You may understand that, you know, food, you want to eat local food, but why bacteria? Um, so I talk about Shindo Fuji. The reason why I promote local food is because of Shindo Fuji, which means body and soil are as one. Body and soil are connected. And in the world of microbiome, we have gut microbiome and soil microbiome. And I believe that they are connected. So when you eat natto, you are basically, you're putting bacillus subtilis into your gut. And if it's come from your soil, like a local soil, maybe in your garden or neighbor's garden or local farms, it's a local bacteria, local bacillus subtilis. But if you buy the bacteria elsewhere, maybe produced in another country or something, it is not local. And often it is said that local bacteria is more suitable to your gut microbiome. So what wild plants you can use? The most common one is rice toro. In Japan, we have been using rice toro to make natto for hundreds of years. 
you usually wrap uh, soybeans, steamed soybeans, uh, in a sort of rice store or sack like this. However, in other countries, other plants are used. For example, in Nepal, they use banana leaves to make natto. In Nepal, natto is called kinema, but basically the same is fermented soybeans. Uh, so they use banana leaves to make kinema. They again wrap uh, steamed soybeans uh, in a banana leaves. By the way, uh, another person asked me about a fermentation process in a yogurt maker that the bottom part of the container were not fermented compared to the top part of the container. Now, that something it never happened to me. Whenever I make natto using the yogurt maker, all natto beans get fermented. So I don't understand how it happened, but the only possibility I can think of is maybe there were not enough uh, Bacillus subterus in the bottom part. That means you didn't put the wild plants at the bottom. So if you think about how traditionally natto were made, they wrap beans. So all beans are touching the wild plants. So you're kind of wrapping the beans with the wild plant. So in the same way, when you make natto in the yogurt container, you can just put some wild plants at the bottom of the container and in the middle and the top. Yeah, try to put the wild plant as many locations as possible so that most beans are connected to the wild plants. The Bacillus subtilis will spread to most beans. And I recently used mugwort. So I used to use mint. And the reason why I used mint was because it was in my garden. It was available. It was uh, easiest to pick. That's why I used mint. There's no other special reason. But recently, I have a mugwort in my garden. So I've been using mugwort to make natto. In fact, I prefer this because mugwort is a special plant. It's a you know special herb in Japan. And, and the quality of natto is actually better. I find it... Uh, Natto looks very powerful. So mugwort is my favorite plant to make natto with at the moment. Yeah, so I put uh, mugwort stalks into the beans like that. Other people have used different plants and many people have recently reported to me that they use this plant to make natto, that plant to make natto. And it seemed to be that you can use most wild plants. Now, the best way to dry plants, because Bacillus subterus is found in any wild plant, but often more in dry plant. And that is why rice straw, wheat straw, corn straw, those are good because they are dried too. But uh, if you cannot get hold of them, then you can use non-dry plants too. Um, but when you do that, uh, find edible plants from your garden. Now, edible, they don't have to be edible uh, because when you make natto with rice toro, you don't eat rice toro. So because you take the plant out, so you're not eating the plant, therefore they don't have to be edible. But because you're putting it in natto, and then, you know, in case something happens, it's safer to choose an edible plant. And please pick one from your garden so you know about the plant. When you choose a wild plant from on the street or somewhere, you don't know if someone sprayed the chemicals on it or not. And definitely you want to choose a chemical-free plant. So find organic edible plants from your garden or neighbor's garden or, you know, somewhere you can get locally. Okay, so to answer the question, can you use grape stalks as a natto starter? I think you can, but I've never done it, so I don't know. You just need to try it. Just try using grape stalk to see how it works. And that's how most people do. And then that's how they discover what plants, uh, what plants are good and what plants are not good and so on. So try it. Um, 
So I have some dried rose hip that grew locally. Would they be acceptable regarding the local issue? I think so. If it grew locally, meaning probably, you know, near your house or in your town or in your region, there's no precise border where the local is. But as long as you feel local is somewhere close by, then it should be okay. Would I be able to use mint from the farmer's market? Yeah, if it's a local farmer's market, I think you can, but you need to make sure that the mint is organic, that the you know chemical is not sprayed on it. Then uh, you should be able to use one. For the details about natto, please read natto unleashed. And also recently I published new book, Live Wiser, Not Smarter. You want to eat natto to improve your health, I suppose. And if you're interested in increasing your health span, staying active and healthy into old age, then this is the book to read. This is one of the most comprehensive books on increasing your health span out there. You will know everything you need to know about health and longevity. It covers diet, fasting, exercise, heat and cold exposure, sleep optimization, and brain optimization. Yet, it is very concise. It is only 106 pages long. There are many other comprehensive books out there too, but many of them are long. You know, Tony Robbins' book is 700 pages long, and Peter Thiel's book is 500 pages long. But my book is very short very short and thing, so it's easy to read. You can read it in one day or even like half a day. So it's concise yet comprehensive. You will not need another book to practice what you need to practice. Yet it is unique. Many of the books are written by Western scientists and they tend to be technical plus focusing on scientific discoveries and evidence-based ideas and so on, usually those books don't cover much about Japanese natural health or perspectives of oriental natural health, such as natto. Or in the last video, I shared with you about how Japanese bodywork experts don't agree with the idea of doing strength training for longevity and that kind of thing. But my book includes that perspective, which is very critical in this age. The book is available on Amazon as a print on demand paperback and Kindle ebook. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiak Takamiya, the author of Natto Unleashed. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And please leave your comment. What wild plant have you used to make natto and how did it go? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with your ikigai!